Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Market Misfits. We're going to be taking a look at XRP. This person is suspecting another push higher. So earlier this morning, we were trading and actually still holding positions from trading XRP on the three minute. We are using Mark Douglas's philosophy, fixed variables, passive day trading with XRP on the three minute. So looks like we just completed an accumulation phase down here on XRP on the smaller time frame. But let's take a look at this article. Then we'll go deeper into the charts. We're also going to take a look at Dogecoin and Bitcoin. So after reaching new yearly, so to break it down real fast for those of y'all that don't know, XRP has suffered, they say suffered, uh, has gotten the most, some of the, taken the biggest beating from the Bitcoin sell-off from the ETFs. You know, some see this as a, bad thing and you get or you can see this is a good thing it's lower so you know what it's more potential for upside it's the way that i'm seeing it anyways let's get into this article and then we'll take a look at the charts after reaching a new yearly low of around 50 cents a prominent analyst expects a turnaround for xrp in the coming weeks the price of xrp has struggled since the start of the new year dropping from 62 cents to a new yearly low of 50 cents over the weekend Although the decline aligns with the broader crypto market correction that has followed in the aftermath of the spot Bitcoin ETF approvals in the U.S., XRP has XRP price has been among the biggest hit, losing 16% over the last month. However, Matthew Dixon, CEO of the popular crypto ratings platform EVA, expects XRP's future fortunes to get better soon in a recent post on x dylan highlighted the x may fall back on fall back a little before starting ascending into higher territory using the one hour time frame chart dixon suggests that xrp will drop around 52 52 50 pushing for the region above the 54 cent so the 54 cent so i'll point out real quick too where he's talking about right here this 54 cents that's the same area that we've been targeting because that's where the resistance trend is. But I'm um, reaching towards reaching that new local high could set the pace for XRP to see further gains in the, the coming days. I agree with this for sure, especially if we break past the 54 cent. That means we'll be on the other side of that trend again. It is also noteworthy that the popular relative strength in the index, the RSI, used to forecast the change in price and momentum is in favor of XRP. At the time of writing, the indicator suggests that XRP is oversold at its market value of 52 cents. So they're talking about because it's down here. Chances of, chances of XRP price reversal increase beyond the technicals analysts hinting at XRP bounce. This is noteworthy that if that few of the factors behind the cryptocurrency slump are already swinging in its favor. favor. So Basically, we kind of talked about this before, but the same things that hold it back will be the same things that launch it forward. For instance, the cryptocurrency market appears to be recovering after the post-ETF dump, which sent prices plummeting. A continued recovery could provide a springboard for XRP to erase its recent losses. Additionally, dumps from large well addresses appear to have slowed as evidence of, by the recent consolidation in the assets price. These improved conditions could pave the way for XRP to stage a comeback. Notably, a failure to do so put XRP at, puts XRP at risk of being overtaken by a stablecoin, USDC, as the fifth largest crypto asset by market capitalization. The stablecoin currently stands at around $26 billion market cap, just $2.4 billion behind XRP ratings. So let's take a closer look here what we got. So they're talking about, I'm assuming, this consolidation right here. So we've been in a state of consolidation for since this point here. So a total of three days. This is on the smaller time frame. I'm sure it extends more than that, but this is right here is when we got our sign of strength. I just want to go over this real quick with everybody, especially for everybody who's in the group. If you are not in the group, our group market misfits, come on over to Facebook. It's free. There's no cost or anything like that, but we're doing analysis in here on other crypto projects besides XRP, even though we are putting XRP 
in here quite a bit and we are putting dogecoin in here a couple other projects that we're really bullish on but you know come on over and join the community we are putting out like i said trade signals every day and also we have a training course and everything ready for everybody so but anyway so just looking at this chart here so we had hit several targets this morning we hit several of these we hit started down here and just kind of wanted to go over this with everybody inside the group so we in our training course we go over the different types of market cycles and how we can use those to make better investment and in trading decisions so an accumulation phase is a sideways is a sideways consolidation we were trading with a team member this morning and saw this break below the 15 minute support actually it really wasn't a break but this is a liquidation spring so I just wanted to go over some of these things real fast because anybody that's new and doesn't know then you can kind of get familiar with this real quick but also reference the training inside of the group inside of the guide section so you go over here to guides and you'll see the training course we're trading off of a wyckoff method using market cycles and also we're dropping analysis inside of the file section on top of our market review so we're going to be getting those here before we spread them out on facebook and here's some of our analysis that we're doing in here like i said all this is completely free so feel free to come over and join us but um so this was one of the reasons why we took this position today so previously and right now currently we are trading this setup so a descending a descending channel into a support and we're trading this break right here and a lot of the times this is going to turn into an inverse head and shoulders just like it did here so we have boom so this liquidation spring down here something that wanted to make sure and touch on because it's important this really heightens the conviction of a position when you see this happen this is to get people to start selling and then also for anybody that's buying and has a stop loss down here so that they trigger their stop loss basically gobble up their money to make a large move larger move up so kind of suspected that we would get that we would get a breach out of the top here as i was looking at this cycle we have three one two three parts and generally you know it's going to be about three or four parts we did see it break here and we got in here on the retest and then there was an engulfing on the one minute so we're trading small time frames but we're using fixed variables so and here was our sign of strength right here so Fixed variables meaning a fixed time frame, a fixed instrument, a fixed amount of profit, a fixed amount of a fixed amount of loss. So, you know, you're we're just running the numbers here as passive technical day traders. But um, so this SOS coming up out of this, when we saw the momentum come up on this candle here and on these candles, this is a sign of strength. So when y'all see this, it says SOS. It just simply means a sign of strength. So where previously we were consolidating within this range between this 15 minute it was resistant and this support. So we were ranging out and this is exactly what you want to see when you're coming up on out of here. You want to see that sign of strength. So boom, not that you don't want to see price stalling out around here. You want to see this. So we still have a position rolling on XRP. We are keeping in mind this weekly resistance trend right here as we're on the three minute so but um whatever we get if we hit target right here then our protocol is the same for when it's down here we on on everything we're making calculated moves but in order for us to be able to have an opportunity to get more profits and not be set with a set amount of profit each time is we're leaving 10 percent run after the second target is hit so we're having a target in the middle and then we have a target at the end and then after that we're moving stop loss to our first target and then 
excuse me, and then we're letting ten percent run go the distance. But um, let's take a look at let's take a look at Dogecoin because we also had a Dogecoin signal out. We actually had several signals out. We'll go over the rest of them on another call. But I wanted to flip over here and look at this one. I went to look at this and probably should have looked at Bitcoin first, but I wanted to point this one out because we previously had hit these targets down here. But just wanted to point out to everybody, don't forget the larger picture. So th these parameters are for a trade today that we are in, but still this long-term or this bigger picture here. We're really bullish on Doge because we think that there's a really good chance that Elon's going to use this for his everything app. And if the everything app becomes the world's largest bank and Doge coins up in the mix, then I think it'd be kind of, wouldn't be too wise not to have some to be hold as some kind of Doge if that happens, because we would see, you know, half the world's liquidity coming through the X app and bolstering the price of Dogecoin. There's no telling. Uh, I see to me, I see Dogecoin having the same potential as XRP. And for that reason, I think that they could end up being competitors. But just again, just kind of speculating on the price here, but didn't want everyone to forget this broader picture that we have on Dogecoin. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. You notice that the Bitcoin dominance has started coming back up. So we have pulled back. But let's take a look at the Bitcoin chart and see where we are. So we are coming up off of this weekly support and this center channel right here. So, and here we are on the four hour. We hit our target on Bitcoin. We had a we had a signal out on the one hour. This finally played out. Also wanted to just point out here that this price got really close to this target right here, but it didn't hit until this is something that's really important that a lot of people will miss. So one over a day, so about about 36, about 35 hours later. Okay, this ended up hitting target and it was near the target and it went all the way back down into drawdown, but it played out. Now, what would have been wrong with taking profits when you saw the pullback right here is because these numbers, when you're using fixed variables, they, they either need to add up or they don't. If you got out right here and you didn't wait passively, that's what I mean by passively then you you would have missed out on half your profits. And if you make a habit of doing that, of getting out early with small amount of profits because of a pullback, but you're letting your stop losses get hit, well that's gonna throw off your that's gonna throw off your when your your profits and losses big time. Cause if you're taking half profits or less than half profits because of a pullback, get scared and you end up taking them here but you're letting your stop loss get hit every time or even worse, moving your stop loss, then you're going to create all kinds of problems. But um, just wanted to touch on that real fast. You guys, that's risk management, you know, and it coincides with our using fixed variables and our passive method inspired by Mark Douglas. So like I said, so if, if you get in the habit of getting out here on a pullback, or even worse, let's say that you went down to negative and you're like, oh, well, it's, this is finished with. You guys, I don't know how many times I've seen this happen that price will get like within a couple points away from the stop loss and then go back and hit the target. So, you know, again, it's just through experience watching this stuff happen that really brings you to the understanding that you really don't know what's going to happen. You don't ever count a position out until it's out and you don't get emotionally involved because we're not looking at this one position 
or those Dogecoin positions or the XRP positions or any of that as a single position. We know that as long as we are lining up our confluences right and we're trading along with market sediment structure and we're using proper risk management and we're keeping our variables fixed and we are following our trading plan with minimal error, then we're going to come out profitable. And if we don't come out profitable, then we're going to come out with the reason why we weren't profitable so that the next batch that we're profit profitable. So we're looking at 20 to 30 trade sample sizes being as one trade. So it's not just like about this one trade. It's how all of them perform at the end of a 30 trade, 20 to 30 trade sample size. We also had recently just put out a signal or we were waiting on Matic right here. So just to throw y'all out there a bone, we're looking for, we're looking for a break of the neckline right here on Matic. And we're dropping stuff like this in the group daily. We have several others we're going to be checking up on, but it's going to be exclusive for the group. But um, so we're just looking for a break right here on Matic. So that's going to be at right into 81 cents. So we get a close up here at 81 and a half cents. And that's going to be mean uh, go time for us to buy into Matic with some leverage. But anyways, you guys, that's going to do it for this one. Y'all have any questions, just reach out and holler and we will see y'all on the next one. See ya.